All right, so uh, let's jump into it today. We're going to do a deep dive on this asteroid 2024 YR4. I mean, you've probably seen all the headlines about it, city killer and all that. And uh, yeah, we've got reports from NASA and the European Space Agency and some analysis from experts. So we're going to try to unpack all of it. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of those stories that really captures the imagination, right? It's not just any space rock we're talking about here. This is a newly discovered asteroid with a pretty decent chance of hitting Earth in 2032. So uh, first things first, what exactly is 2024 YR4 and what makes it so different than every other asteroid out there? Well, uh, 2024 YR4 was discovered pretty recently, actually, just uh, December 27th, 2024, by the ATLAS telescope down in Chile, which is funded by NASA. It's what we call a near-Earth asteroid, meaning that its orbit brings it relatively close to our planet. Wow. And it's estimated to be somewhere between 130 and 300 feet wide. Wow. OK, so that's like bigger than a football field. No wonder everyone's calling it a potential city killer. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's what makes it so interesting for us, you know, from a scientific perspective. An asteroid that size hitting Earth would have some pretty significant regional consequences. OK, so let's talk about those odds of impact. I know the ESA has it at like 2.8 percent for December 22nd, 2032. And NASA's estimate is a bit higher at 3.1 percent. But I think what a lot of people are confused about is that those numbers keep going up. Yeah, that's a really good point. And it's something that's often misunderstood. The asteroid's path itself isn't actually changing. It's our understanding of its orbit that's getting more refined over time. You can think of it kind of like this. Imagine you're trying to hit a dartboard in a dark room. Mm. At first, you know, your target area is huge because you have no idea where the dartboard even is. But as you turn on more lights, that target area shrinks, and your chances of hitting the bullseye become more clear. Okay, yeah, that's actually a super helpful analogy. So it's not that 2024 YR4 is suddenly like veering towards us. It's that our vision is getting better and we're able to make better predictions. It's exactly. Yeah. As scientists gather more and more data from telescopes all over the world, mm -hmm. the region of uncertainty where the asteroid could potentially be in 2032, they get smaller. And as that region shrinks, the chances of it overlapping with Earth's position in space become better defined. So that's why the probability is increasing, even though the asteroid itself is moving along its predictable path. It all comes down to better data and better calculations. Exactly. And that's one of the things that makes 2024 YR4 pretty unique. It's actually holding the record for the longest time an asteroid of its size has spent with an impact probability greater than 1%. You remember Apophis? Oh, yeah, Apophis. Yeah, that was the asteroid everyone's freaking out about a few years ago. Right, but this one is sticking around in that potential impact zone longer than Apophis ever did. Huh, so this one's got some staying power. Well, yeah, I mean, it really shows how much our tracking and prediction capabilities have improved. We're able to identify and monitor these potential threats a lot further in advance than we ever could before. So what are scientists doing right now to actually track 2024 YR4? Well, telescopes all over the world are constantly observing its movement collecting data on its trajectory and its speed. And even the James Webb Space Telescope is going to be taking a look at it before it gets too fate to observe in April. Yeah. And all that data gets fed into these really powerful computer systems like NASA's Sentry system, which helps us refine those predictions that we were talking about earlier. So it's like a whole network of scientists and technology all working together to keep tabs on this asteroid. It really is. And, and you know, you mentioned earlier the Torino scale, which I've seen I mentioned in a lot of the reports as well. What is that exactly? And like, where does 2024 YR4 fit in on that scale? Yeah, I was actually just about to ask you about that. Well, the Torino scale is basically a communication tool. You know, it helps scientists convey the potential danger of near-Earth objects to the public in a way that's easy to understand. It goes from 0 to 10, with 0 meaning absolutely no risk, and 10 meaning, well, certain collision. And we're talking global catastrophe. Okay, so where does our friend 2024 YR4 fall on this scale? Right now, it sits at a level three, which is something to definitely pay attention to. Level three means it's meriting careful monitoring because there's a chance, albeit small, of a collision that could cause regional damage. Okay, level three. Not time to panic, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Right. And, and the good news is the vast majority of asteroids never even make it past level zero on the Torino scale. They're just out there doing their thing, posing no threat to us whatsoever. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. So we've got this asteroid. It's pretty big. It's got this small but real chance of hitting Earth. And scientists all over the globe are tracking its every move. What's fascinating to me is, like, what would happen if it did hit? What would the impact actually look like? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about next. Okay, so we've gotten a sense of what 2024 YR4 is and the potential risk it poses. Now I'm really curious about the what if, you know? 
Like, if it actually did hit Earth, what would that impact actually look like? Well, if 2024 YR4 were to actually impact Earth, it would be traveling at an incredible speed, roughly around 38,000 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. To put that into perspective, that's like over 50 times faster than the speed of sound. Wow. Okay. That's uh, that's pretty mind-bogglingly fast. Yeah, it is. And uh, based on current projections, the potential impact corridor, which is basically the area on Earth that could be affected, stretches across a pretty significant portion of the globe. We're talking about the eastern Pacific Ocean, uh -huh. South America, the Atlantic Ocean parts of Africa, and even South Asia. So a pretty big chunk of the planet could potentially be in the crosshairs. Yeah. But we're not talking about a global extinction event, right? Like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs? No, definitely not an extinction level event. 2024 YR4 is big, mm. but it's not big enough to cause that kind of global devastation. However, an impact would still be catastrophic for the region that was directly affected. We'd be talking about massive shockwaves, potentially huge tsunamis if it hits the ocean, and widespread destruction in the immediate area. Okay, so not a planet killer, but definitely capable of causing some serious damage on a regional scale. Which leads to another question I've been thinking about. Is there anything we can actually do about it? Like, if we know an asteroid is headed our way, is there any way to stop it? That's the million dollar question. And it's one that scientists and engineers all over the world are working on right now. It sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie, but there are actually concepts and even some early stage technologies being explored for deflecting asteroids. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So tell me more about these potential deflection strategies. What are we thinking here? Well, one of the most promising concepts is called a kinetic impactor. It's essentially a spacecraft that's designed to slam into an asteroid at a very high velocity and transfer enough momentum to nudge it slightly off course over time. So like a cosmic billiards shot, but instead of a cue ball, we're using a spacecraft. I like it. Yeah. It's a pretty elegant solution in theory, but it's incredibly complex in practice. You need to calculate the asteroid's mass, its composition, its trajectory, and then figure out the precise angle and speed at which to hit it in order to achieve the desired deflection. Sounds like a lot of math involved. Oh, absolutely. It's a massive computational challenge, but it's something that is well within our capabilities. And it's not the only option we have. Oh, okay. So what else is out there? What other strategies are being considered? Another concept that's being explored is called a gravity tractor. And this one's a bit more subtle. It involves positioning a spacecraft near the asteroid and using the spacecraft's own gravitational pull to very gently tug the asteroid off course over a long period of time. So no dramatic impact, just a slow and steady tug. Exactly. It's a more gentle approach, but it requires a lot of lead time. You need to identify the potential threat well in advance to have enough time to maneuver that spacecraft into position and let gravity do its work. So it's all about early detection then. The sooner we know, the more options we have for dealing with a potential threat. Exactly. And that's why the work being done to track and monitor these near-Earth objects is so crucial. It gives us the time and the knowledge to act before it's too late. This is some pretty mind-blowing stuff, I gotta say. It really highlights the importance of space exploration and the incredible ingenuity of all the people working in this field. I completely agree. It's a field that's constantly evolving and pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. And it's not just about science and technology either. It's about understanding our place in the cosmos and ensuring the long-term survival of our species. Okay, so we've talked about the potential impact the odds the terrain are scale, and even the technology that we might one day use to deflect an asteroid. Hmm. What's the main message that you want listeners to take away from all of this? Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive into 2024 YR4. We've looked at its discovery, the science behind those impact probabilities, and even the technologies being developed for planetary defense. But uh, what does it all mean? Like, what's the takeaway here? Well, I think the first takeaway is that while the risk from 2024 YR4 is real, it's important to remember that the odds of an actual impact are still statistically very low. We're talking about less than a 3% chance, which means there's a greater than 97% chance it's going to miss Earth entirely. Yeah, so it's definitely not time to panic. But this whole story really does highlight the fact that, you know, we live in a dynamic solar system and... Uh, these things can happen, so it's smart to be prepared. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the second takeaway. The remarkable work being done by scientists and engineers all around the world. I mean, yeah. They're the ones who are constantly monitoring the skies, crunching the numbers, and developing those deflection strategies we talked about. 
Yeah, it's pretty inspiring when you think about it. It's a testament to his human ingenuity and our desire to protect our planet. It really is. Yeah. And I think there's even a deeper message here, too. You know, this isn't just about rocks and space. It's about our relationship with the cosmos. Mm. It's about recognizing that we're part of something much bigger than ourselves and that we need to take responsibility for our place in the universe. That's a beautiful way to put it. It's about recognizing the threats, but also appreciating the wonder and the vastness of space. Exactly. And I think that sense of wonder is ultimately what drives us to explore and learn and to develop the knowledge and tools we need to protect ourselves. So as we wrap up this deep dive on 2024 YR4, what's the one thought you'd like to leave our listeners with? Hmm. I'd say keep looking up. Stay curious, and remember that while the universe can be a pretty daunting place, it's also filled with incredible beauty and endless opportunities for discovery. Well said. And on that note, thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. We hope you found it insightful and maybe even a little bit inspiring. Until next time, clear skies, everyone.